Uh, over to Lawrence, the ch our chairman, Lawrence Turner. I think he's just going to start things off and uh, welcome you. Good evening. Thank you for all turning out this evening. Um, this has been something we've been wanting to do for quite some time. Um, coach is going to come. He really wants to talk to you and tell you what's going on. We have a couple of surprises for you. We're going to give you the future of the club as we see it. And as I'm so good at saying things that just get me into bother, let's get it out of the way. If you don't like Lawrence, do it. <laughs> I'm not going to cock up again tonight. I'm going to hand it back over to Steve, who's going to run most of the evening. But thank you for taking the trouble and the time to come and listen this evening. All right, James. Yes? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One job. You will not get a job in panto, mate, I can assure you. Unless it's the back end of the horse. Oh, no, he wouldn't. <laughs> hey, well, look, as Lawrence says, welcome everyone. Yes, sir. Just one thing, one thing, James. I just think on behalf of myself and all the others of fans who went to White Haven to thank Lawrence for what he did putting that coach on for us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Very, very good of him, that wasn't it? It was an excellent gesture. So, well done, Lawrence. And what a great victory in the end as well. Yeah, yeah. Great victory. Um, so, the, really, the reason we're together is that uh, Simon's been saying for a while now that he thought it would be nice if he could speak to the spectators. You see him about on uh, game day, and obviously some of you may see him in town, etc. But it's nice for him to come and hear your comments, see what you think any questions you've got for him. So you'll get a real good opportunity to, to do that when he gets here. Um, also, um, we just thought, we so we could drag it out a little bit, um, we thought we'd give you a chance to ask the board a few questions as well. Because these are turbulent times, really are turbulent times in rugby league and sport in general. Uh, I was watching, I don't know if any of you watch uh, horse racing, but they're having a debate on Saturday and they were saying that the attendances at uh, race courses were well down. Attendances at some cricket games, not the test team by the way, but at some cricket games, are well down. And um, you don't have to look, and we're gonna look at something a little bit later, which will just show you how that's affecting us. You know, uh, very much so. And, to the best of our knowledge, other teams in both Super League and in the Championship as well. However, just see where my man is. Is he about? Is he in the building? No, not yet. Not yet. Give me a nod when he's in the building. What I'd like to do is to say that part, a big part of what we're doing at the minute is re-signing players for next year. We've got, I think you'll agree, probably the best squad we've had for 10 years at the moment. No doubt about it. Um, and secondly, it's some of the best rugby that we've seen for an awful long time. Uh, we recruited 11 players last year. The downside of that is it took us three or four games and we lost a few points. We lost a few points along the way, but you're now seeing the benefits of the players that we got in. Obviously, we're trying to retain as many of... Thank you. As many of those players as possible. Um, and part of that retention is signing players that we've already that we've already got and not bringing new ones in just at this moment. However, we've got a signing to announce this evening. We've got a signing, a re-signing, and we've got to think, thank two or three people. Really thank them. First of all, uh, Jamie Conyers, who's in, been involved behind the scenes. You don't well, know Jamie, but he's been involved with a little bit. Not just in this, what we're talking about, but a number of other things as well. Um, we'd like to thank the people who contribute to PF2. PF2 um, is our squad builder. And David, we really need to talk about changing that name, I think, back to squad builder. I think the histories, we, can, we need to talk about it anyway. But our squad builder people, if you are someone here who contributes to squad builder, you've been particularly influential in helping us with this signing this evening. And finally, to the Sporters Trust, you all know them, they're a band of people who continually fundraise on behalf of this, this club. A fantastic band, 
They've supported us. They gave us a check, what, three, four weeks ago, David, now, for £10,000. And that, thank you. And that directly, directly meant that we could make this signing. It gave us confidence to make that signing. So to you and your team, David, thank you very much indeed. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So, James, can we introduce our first re-signing uh, for next season? If you'd like to come in, Louis Jouffre. I thought you might have been excited by that, everyone. Uh, Louis, uh, you've had a fantastic first season with us. You've, uh, um, you, you've performed brilliantly. How, how have you enjoyed it? Obviously enough to re-sign for another year, um, but how have you enjoyed it this year? Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Just uh, start maybe a bit slowly and then sun start to come out and that's my game now. So I'm really pleased right now and just get along well with the other player from the spine, so I'm just happy to be here and to sign again for a few more years. Good man. Good man. A few more. A few more. Well, I bet I'm worthy really proud of about that. We'll <laughs> see how we go. Uh, Louis, you've, what, what's been different about coming down from Cumbria, where you had a fantastic year last year, you took uh, that division, and then you moved into Halifax. What have you found? Any differences in the squad? Yeah, well, uh, Whitehaven is really a small squad, so it's we've got way more competition here for places, so it makes it even, you need to train hard and that, so, well, it's good for us, I think it makes, take the best out of everyone and just, yeah, that's all. Louis, uh, Ian tells me that uh, you've, you've managed to get the car off the road this week, <laughs> you and uh, Lachlan, is that, is that correct? He said it broke down in Manchester. With any, without any oil in it, is that correct? Oh God! Yeah, that's correct. So we walked down to the shed today. Uh, I think just unlucky. We got a bit of nightmare Monday, but that's all right. So still alive. So that's quite good. He got here, so it doesn't matter about the car, does it? Um, we've got, uh, and, and the good news is, and we must thank him that uh, uh, Martin Utley from uh, Bob Wade Cars. We are hopeful that he's sorting out an alternative uh, mode of transport. So if that comes off, thank you, Martin. Uh, he's not here this evening, but that'll be terrific to get these lads about. Um, I said, so that's a good, good signing for us. Yeah. Excellent. You can just pull one more in, and that's all until next week. And we've got some, uh, we've got some signings next week. Um, do you want to run anything on there, Rick, or do you want to work? Uh, I, I missed my... Sucks, I thought we were going to play it first. Don't yeah, we know? were, but we lost track of time. Do you want me to we? run this one then? Run this one. Have a sit down and look at yourself, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> to announce uh, Simon's arrived now but before we do that should we give them another teaser yeah yes yeah it's not much of a teaser you'll work it out as soon as it comes up but... <laughs> after this
Lacken and Lacken Wandry. Good mate, good. I'm just watching some of those uh, tries you're scoring there. Crikey. I, was a bit, I used to dive into the swimming pool like that. <laughs> so I've ended up looking like this. <laughs> hey, we're delighted to have you back on board, mate. Um, it, was, it was lovely to see your parents over a few weeks back. I, test, I, I guess they all got back safe and sound. Yeah. Back home, yeah. And you have a nice trip up to Scotland. Yeah, that's good. Excellent, mate. So how have you enjoyed your time here at Halifax? That's, that's been good. Uh, everyone's welcome me in. Like it's... Uh, like it's my own family, so uh, no, I've really enjoyed everything so far. But um, yeah, I'm happy to stay for another few years. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. Excellent. And um, not to put any pressure on you, but how many? Um, how many? Uh, two years, I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. Two years. Excellent. Great two years to look forward to. How many more tries do you think you'll get this year? Not to put any pressure on you, Lachlan. Hopefully one or two. One or two. <laughs> one or two. Uh, okay. Yeah. Every game. Every game. That'd be really good. Well, you're second in the try scoring in the championship at the minute, aren't you, mate? I just wanted to to sort something out. Lou was just uh, telling us a little bit earlier that you went across to Manchester in the car <clears throat> and you sort of wrecked it. Is that correct? I wasn't the one driving it. Ah, so it was, it was Lou driving, was it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, excellent, uh, excellent. And looking forward to the game uh, next Monday. That's a real big game for us, isn't it? What are you thinking about playing against York? That no, should be good. Um, hopefully we can play a bit better the last time we played them. I know we beat them, but uh, the first half performance wasn't our best. Obviously got too sin bin that time, so uh, as long as we have a good first half performance, I'm pretty sure we can put them to bed in the second half. And uh, I guess you must have been pretty proud of Greg Worthing with how he caught that guy up there, were you? You didn't did miss, did you, mate? No. Yeah, all of my all of my all of my friends are Halifax supporters now. They thought it was a cracker that one. Really. <laughs> Terrific. Look, ladies and gentlemen, Louis and Lachlan have been stars for us this year. Hopefully they can stars for more years to come. It's great to have them back on board. They've been a real influence on the club so far. Guys, thank you. Um, if you want to hang about a little bit, because uh, Griggs is coming in, we're gonna take some questions and if people here have got questions for either of you two. We'll be finished this little spot at half eight, then you can go and do your uh, uh, Wednesday night mechanics course if you want. <laughs> uh, you do that. Uh, but uh, hang around while Simon comes in. Excellent. Loud of applause, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's a nice little bit of good news to start the night off with, isn't it? Uh, Simon's here, Simon Great. Round of applause for our head coach. Simon, good to see you, mate. Most important question, do you want to sit down or do you want to stand up? Well, we're going to we're, sit down, sit down, my knees are not good. No, I'm going to the audience. So, so if you want to sit down, the lads want to come up with you, show a bit of solidarity they can. That's nice, team spirit and all that. Shouldn't have to tell you. Most important, just have to switch those on, sorry. But, um, how did they go on? Did they win? Did your lads team win? Um, yes. Uh, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're not talking about that, Steve. No, they lost. <laughs> they lost. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Simon's come in. Simon was a real driver in this. Uh, he has been for a couple of months now asking us to, uh, sorry, asking us to try and get this event on. Um, we're happy to take questions from the floor. If you put your hand up, I'll come out to you. I'll just ask you to say your name and ask your question, and I'm sure Simon and all the lads will uh, will respond. Anybody got a question? Well, that's been a waste of time, hasn't it? <laughs> Marvellous. Anybody got a question? Thank you, David. Yeah, David. Hi, Simon. Thanks for coming this evening. Um, do we know when Titus's ban is likely to start? It's already started. Um, so this week, this York game will count, oh, yeah. um, regardless of the hearing being later. Um, look, we all saw it. It's uh, yeah. Maloudi made the most of it, didn't he? Well, unfortunately, yeah. Titus put his hands on him, and he's just put himself in that situation. Unfortunately, um, but Titus's agent, um, like everyone else, is a bit aggrieved at the, the number of games. Um, it writes him off for what would be. To run in a third of a season, I suppose, eight games, if he gets eight, it could be more. Um, they want to try and appeal it and, and see if they can't get it down. Um, I don't think there's 
there's not a great deal of chance, but with it being that sort of number of games, I think it's probably worth a shot and it's not probably not gonna hurt us either way. Any more questions for Simon? Yeah. Yes, here we go. Thank you, Neil. Yes, with these uh, sendings off now, um, the offender <coughs> seems to get less than what the uh, aggressor does. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that were brought in at the beginning of the season? We were in, uh, made aware of this. Uh, and if so, uh, is it instilled in the players? To, I know it's very much... Uh, when uh, when something happens and you you uh, fight back, it it is uh, something that is only natural. But obviously, is it instilled in them to try and uh, avoid all this? Because um, okay, we seem to be playing quite well uh, with less numbers, but it's not always going to be the case. Um, look, I think everyone knows where the game's at. It's, the game's been sued by former players um, due to early onset dementia and claims of not having their concussion dealt with throughout their career so the league are rightfully so trying to protect themselves so moving forward that number doesn't get bigger number of players trying to trying to sue them um, with regards to the offender and the aggressor i think we've probably got rose tinted glasses on there haven't we i know Maloudi does all them other bits but there's a choice to make in there greg has got a couple of seconds between that happening and getting to his feet he doesn't have to do that so he'll have to pay the price for it that's that's how it is um, everyone knows it's not it's not the early 2000s, which a bit went on there and you get away with a bit. It's certainly not the 80s. We're so far removed from it, from those well, games. We've all been there, Simon. Pardon? We've all been there, amateur, amateur level. Yeah, yeah amateur, yeah, we're anywhere. Or whatever, you, we're this, you don't see it, amateur, amateur now. Do you want my... <laughs> yeah, just yeah. so it can There were none of this checking your head or, you know, he's got on with the game. Yeah. I feel the game's getting a bit uh, very political, I think, in some respects. A lot of teams. Especially Super League. If you watch the game they play in Australia, I mean, they, they do hit each other. That shut down. Right. So we should be hitting them harder, Simon. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah you, you can't hit people in the head. That's, there's not really any other answer to it. And I get what you mean. Everyone likes to see it, don't they? Funnily enough, I got sent a screenshot of uh, with two tweets from Premier Sports. And the first one was Brandon Moore try at Barrow, 2,400 views or something. And then the video that followed, there was just a book with <coughs> I think 80 odd thousand people saw it. So clearly there's a bit of a, a bit of a thing there where people like, like to see that sort of thing. But again, unfortunately, they have to take the concussion element a bit serious. And it's a shame because at times, I think it, it, is, not, it is good to watch, don't get me wrong, but everyone knew the rules at the start of the year. And to be honest with you, it's probably only gonna get worse. But I do agree with the, uh, the play acting bit. And there's a lot of that going on and that won't change either until one of the referees goes right you're off for play acting and as soon as that happens all that will stop as well and we'll get that, that out of our game which it is pretty ugly to watch isn't it? Hi Simon, John Rochford. The season's gone great this season so far. How do you see it going now towards the end? Could we be actually be pushing for second? Uh, yeah, you're right, it has gone well so far. We started at the start, didn't we? we lost a couple of games. Um, a lot of, again, I've said it in an interview this week with Faz, I think it was Faz. Uh, context, big thing this week on its own, but right at the beginning of the year, we had these two, um, a, a, number of, a number of our books playing that were brand new to the team, and the pre season were probably the shortest we've had. And we're trying to play a certain way and all the rest of it, so I think you know, losing the away against Barrow is a bit of a loss. Bit of a bit of a crappy loss to be fair, 18-6 up I think we were lost. Then we lost playing in a bowl of soup out there. The other games we've lost, I don't think we can moan about. Um, Featherstone and Lee twice. Now they're head and shoulders, or have been head and shoulders, but I think there's obviously a lot going on at both clubs and only one can come first and I think in Batley beating them they got the timing right. So in answer to that question of coming, can we kick on and, and do well second half? There's absolutely no reason why not. Um, the bands don't help us. You know, we've been quite fortunate uh, with injuries. Touching the wood there, I think. Um, yeah, Greg and, and, and Noga, who are still still plugging away. Uh, we had them two of them, that we've done okay. So if we can stay reasonably healthy, there's no reason why not. And with the battle timing, they, they played Feverson at right time. There's no reason why come end of year we can get our timing right and, 
and pick them off. And I think Lee are head and shoulders above everyone, but I don't think they're that far, that far in front. Um, they just got. Listen, we've got a few match winners, two, two of them are sat here, but I think Fev have got quite a few, aren't they, where when they're not having a great day, they've got a good number of blokes who can just do that one thing and then score a try out of nothing and get them out of trouble, and you know, and that'll probably continue, I think. Um, but yeah, hopefully we, when we face them again, we're in the right sort of form, and there's no reason why we can't pick them off. I'm, I'm pretty sure the boys will be keen to go and deliver a performance against them. I'll do it at home, rather. They want a way where there's a bounce over Louis' head, then his hamstring goes and the game swings like that, that's how close they are against the better teams. So yeah, we're unfortunate that day, but yeah, we'll get another crack at them later on, so we'll see. Oh, here you go. Hi. Sammy, look, like obviously this year and the previous year, you've changed a lot, a lot of players for good reason at the beginning of the season. Would you hope to keep more of your current squad together and maybe just add two or three players? bearing in mind a good performance on the field? Yeah, definitely. I think we had a couple of years of big turnover, as you said. I'm not going to get into the reasons. I don't think everyone needs to know all of them, but, you know, old man time, that's one of the reasons. Um, some people just want to move on as well. If that will happen this year, there'll be some that will leave us because they get offered more money, a better opportunity, what suits them a bit better, that suits their lifestyle, where they live and all those bits. So yeah, there's all the bits to contend with. But in an ideal scenario, yeah, we'd like to keep the majority of our squad together um, and, add, and add some quality to it. But I think we're at a real difficult time for, for everyone, really, um, where money's tight. And if you haven't got a backer, which unfortunately we haven't, it's, it's going to be a difficult year this year, I think. Um, yeah, some of that, obviously, I'm not going to go into too much detail, but some of the conversations I've had just recently with agents, um, costings and... I think everyone's aware of IMG coming into the game and the possibilities of league splitting and all those bits. And there's, a, there's a few clubs that have got a bit of weight behind them that are starting to throw some, some, some coin around, so we might lose a couple to that. We want to go and get, pick up a better wage packet and all the rest of it. So we've got a lot to contend with, but yeah, if we can keep the majority together, I think it serves as well at the start of next season. But I think it, if we want to get better, we need to keep improving in all areas, don't we? And that means adding, adding some quality, hopefully. Thanks, Simon. Anyone got? To, I've got. To, I've got a couple of questions sent in to me, Simon, on uh, on email. Um, one was uh, obviously Finney's gone to Dewsbury, and um, the, it's a uh, it's a fairly active group. The nights that you're training, there's lots going on, lots of different disciplines. Um, you're working without an assistant coach at the minute. Um, what are your plans there, and uh, how how difficult is it to do it? on your own? Uh, it is difficult. Uh, we've got a good set of lads, which really helps, obviously. Um, I have to usher them around a little bit now and again, but not nearly as much as the under-12s team I coach. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, look, Finney going, bit of, bit of a loss. I thought he was really good for our half-backs, and I've said on you know in interviews that on, this, on Finney's departure that I've known Finney since I was uh, you know, 10. Eight, eight years old maybe and we know each other really well we see the game very similar um, so that's how it, it fit really well for us but obviously he's going to take his opportunity and you can't, you can't deny him that there's not that many jobs around and he's opted to go and take one so good luck to him he's got, he's got a tough job on his hands to be fair but I think that's a challenge um, he's up for and they will get better Dewsbury as well uh, but with regards to doing the, the coaching and whatnot, Scott's strength conditioning coach and, and coaches as well uh, does a lot of our back five but he can't be in the gym and on the field at the same time, so that presents some difficulties there. Uh, the day-to-day -day stuff, I'm full-time, so I, I do everything. Um, Finney and Ricky last year, not to do them any disservice because they've both had a great value, but you know I'm planning everything anyway. It's just having that nice, trusty pair of eyes there, another pair of hands, so I get to sit back and, and watch the session unfold. These probably think I'm doing nothing um, while Finney were refereeing and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it takes a bit of that away, it does make it a bit difficult, but I'll be honest, they're not the most attractive jobs in the world. Um, it's, not, it's not a ton of money for quite a lot of, quite an investment of your time, and obviously Ricky last year moved on because he's, well he misses he's about halfway along with number five, so there's just not enough hours in the week, um, and some things are a bit more important. And then Finney, yeah, obviously he's gone for them reasons, so I think we'll probably, I've had a few people get in touch, um, <laughs> But I do think it's something that I won't be committing or jumping in on. Um, it'll need to be the right person 
and obviously that right person will have to understand that we're not you know we're not a money club they, they come in they have to come for the right reasons as well and, and also obviously add value we don't just want anyone so i think that'll be a a work in progress i'd imagine until pre-season comes around we'll um, we'll manage i think got a few trusty blokes who've been helping out i don't know if anyone knows but anthony irving's been the last couple of games those that have been around long enough coffin them uh, all know Irv, um, Irv played for us in the academy days, coached around Halifax for years, good bloke, <coughs> uh, ticking the good bloke factor but he's a busy man as well, he can't be here every week um, but I think we'll see a couple of maybe old faces, trusted trusted people to me that'll, that'll come in and help us out on occasion throughout the year and, that, and that'll get us through I think. Good stuff, thanks. Louis, can I just ask you a question, World Cup, what's the uh, situation with France, are you uh, knocking on the door there? Uh, yes, hopefully. Well, I've been selected for the last game in France against Wales. I end up 18th man, so it wasn't my time, but hopefully come back end of the year if I keep playing well for Halifax, I, I get my chance and then play in the World Cup, that'd be nice. You think you'll, you'll, be, you'll make the squad for that, won't you? <laughs> I don't know, I'm not the, the coach, but yes, I hope. I think you should, Louis. <laughs> you definitely think you should. No, you should. And Lachlan, what about the uh, north of the border, lads? Are, are you still in the World Cup? I'm not sure whether you are or not. Of course, mate. Oh, We're sorry, mate. Nice. <laughs> Didn't mean, didn't mean that as a, a joke or anything. <laughs> nah, we're, we've got a good group, we've got uh, an Australian... Got any Scotsmen in it, Luke? Huh? Anyone, anyway, sir? Any Scots in it? Yeah, no, nah, I'm, I'm number one. <laughs> <laughs> man. You, yeah, so you're looking forward to that, I guess? Yeah, of course, hopefully I can get selected in the World Cup side. It's obviously yeah. a goal of mine and a, a dream good of mine to play, so but yeah. I don't sound too Scottish, but I... Uh, uh, certainly claim it. Well, we'll, we'll all be thinking about you both when you're playing in that and keeping a keen eye on you. Good luck to both of you with that. Simon, I've got a, a, another, another question for you. Um, <clears throat> looking ahead to possibly next year and the year after, you mentioned to it about, about it, about these teams that are going to be spending. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, Keith Lee have got a, a budget of £500,000. It's well, a lot of money from, where? Oh, from, from uh, benefactors, yeah. right? So we, we don't enjoy that, but we've got lots of other things that we have got and we've got a great camaraderie and a great team spirit, a great coach and really good players. How, how, how do you see it panning out next year with some of those bigger sides? Because they can't all do well, can they? No, they can't. Um, but in reference to your question there, there's going to be a lot of decisions made by the better players in the comp will be chased by the better teams and it just so happens that a lot of the better teams have got benefactors so they're the ones that are, that are probably going to have a nice payday I wish I was still playing about it, I might have done alright um, but no, it's, it just makes it harder I've said time and time again, I think I came back 20, end of 2015 after we just had a, had a good year so I'm too far away, not been hearing me all along um, 2015 had a good year I did play obviously 2016 some stuff going on with me but then after that it's got, I think it's just got harder every year. The, the first couple of years, they were maybe Featherstone, Toulouse. Who else did we have a good, good game with? Toronto. Toronto, London. Other than that, you probably ended up having a lot of pretty steady games. Whereas now, we saw it at the weekend, Whitehaven and, and Batley drawing, Barrow turning over York. And, you know, there's a, there's a real cluster of teams there that are really good um, and competing every week. And some of those teams, are the ones we're, we're talking about, and obviously Keithley in the background, a couple of millionaires propping them up, which which would be delightful, wouldn't it? So if everyone wants to get Euros on for um, for Friday, that'd be good. We'll see where that takes us. Um, it does make it tough, Steve. Uh, retaining players of this calibre is important. Um, we've yeah. got you know we've got a few more up our sleeve as well. Um, but yeah, going to market is going to be difficult as well, and, and getting those those quality players that Keyser, Louis, and um, both our rockers are doing a good job, and Woody. The fast are the, the, the challenging teams every time they got possession they're quite scary to play against I, I would imagine so hopefully we can keep them all fit for the remainder um, and yeah Wood is he's 27 now so he's probably at that age as well where he's a man now he's grown up a bit matured and all the rest of it so you're probably going to see the, the best of him in the, in the years to come still which again is probably a bit of a, a bit of a scary prospect for our position yeah um, I know you've played in some great coaches in your time and one of them's just Got the boot at OKR, Tony Smith, who I know you admire. <laughs> it's not funny for Tony it Smith. Funny, yeah. It's not, no, it's not. Um, 
Out of all the people who've coached you, who's had the biggest impact on you? And why? Oh, probably a bit on it. Just a chunk of it, just through the length of time um, associated with him. But I've had some, some good, really good coaches. Tony Anderson, I still speak to now and again. Uh, it was my first sort of, uh, adults coach down here. Really good coach, uh, a real loss to the game. Um, I think he let his heart rule his head at that period. Um, then who would have after that? Paul Cullen. Cullen, very different kettle of fish. Um, Warringtonian, through and through. Just angriest man I've ever met in my life. Scary man. Um, <laughs> if you lost, you felt like you were going to come in and give it to you, to be fair. Um, but yeah, very passionate bloke. Oh, they've all been really different, I suppose, what I'm saying. But yeah, we torn a, a long time with him, and as he said, he's. He just departed uh, Hulk KR. It's just one of them things, isn't it? I think no one really knows what goes on behind the scenes unless you're close enough and, and it's, a, it's a bit messy up there. And he'll go on and do a, a great job somewhere else. He's, um, I think he's proven to be a bit of a specialist in flipping sides around, hasn't he? Hull, Huddersfield, Leeds, um, Warrington did a good job with them, never quite got there, did we? But he um, got some finals and some success there. And I think he's done a really good job with Hulk KR, but that's. That's been forgotten because of some of the stuff that have gone on, obviously. Uh, but yeah, I think definitely in understanding the game and trying to understand people, Tony's had probably the biggest influence on me, yeah. Good. And um, realistically, you said finishing third's not the be-all and end-all. It'd be nice to do that. Second would be better. First would be even better. <laughs> so when we get to the end of the season and we look back at it, where do you expect, the, where, do, where do you expect, what do we've achieved? What do you think you're looking for? What would you be satisfied with? <laughs> I think we, it's really hard to go one step better than last year, isn't it? Getting a semi with, with what else is going on in the league. I think if we get there, we've, we've done really well. I do think this group's got the ability to, to kick on a little bit further. Um, it's really hard barometer of you know, what success to, to, you know, to the different people in the room, but with a, a modest budget in a league where there's plenty of more money than us, um, plenty of teams that are able to You've seen the, the amount of loans and, and movement around South Everstone, they sign someone every week, don't they? And, you know, there's a few more teams that have got lots of movement going on there. And it'd be nice to like, get, be bolstered by that at times, but we're not we're not that club. We're doing tough more often than not. And I've said it loads of times, being an underdog, it doesn't, it's not a bad thing. It, it suits us at times, but as I said to the boys at the weekend, I think yeah, it's, it's easy being an underdog. There's no pressure on you. I think for us now, people expect us to, to do well. Um, so it's, it's a little bit harder to maintain, you know, that perch, get on that perch if you like. Everyone wants to pick you off. It's everybody's cup final, so it's tough for us. But you know, I've got, I've got no qualms about what I think we can achieve, and I think that can be third. Um, I just it'd be a great winning to get a semi final, and put on a great performance, and get to a final. And although if, it, if, it's, if it's Lee we're playing, <laughs> if you win Euros we might go. Up. Okay. If not we might struggle. Why not? Why not? You go for it. <laughs> What, go for Euros? No, <laughs> we don't want to start this championship for forever. We don't, are no, you right? Yeah, well, so it's a bad one, lads, we're going to go for it. Alright, but again, there's a reality. And again, and again, and again, no matter who you're playing, we're going to go for it. Yeah, we will, and we do. Good. Well, let me just address what you're saying now. Good, so, we've got reality and expectation. So the expectation you is... Like enough. Shush. Oh, can I stop? <laughs> so, reality and expectation. The reality is, we're about middle at road on what we have resource wise and the expectation is we go up and that's something that's all, probably always been out of kilter here we will fight and try to punch above our weight every year we want to win every game we don't want to lose any however sometimes some teams just have more than you on the day don't they or more than you over the course of a season and that's where a couple of teams probably are at present oh right go on then so Charles but these lads these lads are regulars stars aren't they it's yeah. Okay. So, what, what were we question? So, just wanted to, we want to shift it around. Alright. Just wanted to, we'll bring it to the squad. One, you'd bring it? I'd bring it. Alright. Oh, well, maybe you should have my job then. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you should. Maybe you should. Yeah, go on. So, uh, it's a question for all three of you. How does it feel you go to Dewsbury, there's a crowd of 1100 there, where at least 600 were wearing blue and white. Yeah. What's it like for the players to see the blue and white army? Yeah. Good question. Oh, very good. Uh, we feel pretty busy. I've been to Dewsbury before, 
uh, with Batley and sometimes they were like only Jews really fun, it's a tough place to go. I think fans make the hard job a bit easier. Go in here, see the blues and fan, uh, and white fans, sorry. And just shouting voice makes everything easier and we're just happy with it. Yeah, of course. I thought there was more than 600, to be honest. It felt like more out there. Um, no, it's, 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 it's like that extra bloke on the field, I think. Um, no, it obviously gives us a boost to, to see you all there and to see the support that you throw at us. It's, it's unreal when you're on the field. It just gives us that extra leg, I think. But, yeah, it's very good. Mike, I think you've got a question. It's not a question. An answer? <laughs> Can I just say on behalf of most of the supporters that are here tonight, I think you're doing a bloody good job, both coaching and the team. <coughs> I mean, the team spread is brilliant. When we played Barrow with 11 players, and we, we went away and, and with more points than, than we when we lost those. So, for me at least, I think you're doing a brilliant job, and you don't need to do a lot of changing. You've got a good squad, a good coach, and I just wish we had a lot more support. Oh, do we? <laughs> we'll talk about that after the break, Mike, I think. Yes, sir. A dual reg deal with Huddersfield, is it a case of only using those players when we've got to, or do you have to have what players Ian Watson gives you, or can you pick and choose when it suits us? Yeah, well, dual reg is a contentious one. Some love it, some hate. I'm not a massive fan of it, but I think, as I said before, it's a bit of an insurance policy. When you don't have a massive squad, if you're not connected to another and you do need someone, you'll wish you were connected. Uh, so having insurance as opposed to not having it when you need it. Um, how does it work? So we're the junior partner, aren't we, unfortunately. So Huddersfield, they'll pick their team. And then dependent on what Ian wants around his squad and what his plans are for the week and everything, then there might be some bodies available. Um, I have a pretty decent relationship with him. We haven't got much out of it so far, have we? Just simply because I feel like what we have been offered, you've got to weigh that against, is it better than what we've got? And what effect does it have on the team? The, the group dynamic, obviously. Um, but we do, and hopefully, plan to, the plan this weekend is to have Nathan Mason playing, because Ads is the wrong side of 30, Adam Tangar, sorry. Wrong side of 30, uh, played every game, played big minutes, had a big impact in those games. And you know, at some point you need to freshen them up, don't you? So yeah. that's a tool we can use it for as well. And um, obviously didn't go to plan this week, but that's something we'll, we'll probably look to do again uh, uh, later on down the line. Now it's a long stretch, there's no more weekends off at last. Um, but what is it, 10 games or something, back to back. Um, with a small squad, we're probably gonna need them at some point. So hopefully we can use them when we want to um, and when it suits us as opposed to having to ask and hope we can get them. Thanks, Simon. Neil, Builder, I'll be with you. I'll be again. Uh, yeah, um, Whitehaven, we have uh, Halifax here. Supporters have a close affection uh, with Whitehaven, and I'm sure we've uh, all enjoyed our trips up to Whitehaven. But Lachlan, how, did, how were you attracted to Whitehaven? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm over here now. Um, now, just the offer come about when I was. I moved back from Sydney back to Newcastle and I played a game of nines rugby league with one of my mates and an offer come up to play over in a English championship side and I was like, you beauty, it's going to be a, a big side and then I realised it was wide and and got there and uh, they sold me the dream and uh, I, I enjoyed the year anyway there and they were, they were good so, but, yeah, here now. Got a question here from uh, Hilda I think, yes? <laughs> Simon, um, you know when we talked about uh, Buddha being injured, uh, and because was it his thigh or his leg or something, calf? Calf. Do you want him to come in and rub him, Hilda? <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you why you kept sending him on with the tea? Weren't there anybody else to check him on? <laughs> 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 so yeah. he, he, he was struggling to walk, never mind. Well, that was probably because of the ice packet stuffed in his sock. Look, <laughs> it, it weren't that bad. It's just... Wood is an explosive. He's a, if you like, he's a, he's a racehorse, if you like. And finely tuned. And 
if he, if when he's got a bit of a tight tightness there, if we go and let him play a game in the in the way he plays it, you know, there's a chance that someone's going to go bang there. So walking around, don't worry, he's fine. We didn't we didn't overexert him doing that. Good question, that Hilda. Why did we let him go on with the tea? And did you see he dropped the biscuits as well? <laughs> Any more questions? Any more questions for Simon? I think we're about, uh, well, we said we'd be finished that spot at half past, we're at uh, 25 past now. Uh, I was reading an interesting thing on the Featherstone, um, are you alright with that now Simon, you happy with that guys, yeah? Okay, you. Yes. anything you want to contribute, anything else, no? Yes? Good lad. Um, and I was reading something on that forum that was talking about coaches, and in particular, I'm not being patronising here, talking about our coach. You don't hear this from Featherstone often. And they were saying how good it was to... They're not happy with theirs at the minute. That's the background to this. How good it was to hear someone speak before and after the game so well and so passionately about the game, about his club and about the country in general. So, Simon, thank you for that. We internally... We internally know... We've got a great coaching set up here. We know we've got a great playing set up here as well. Um, and for all your efforts, to the players and to the coaching staff, on behalf of you, thanks very much. If you'd like, uh, we're going to have 10 or 15 minutes. If you'd like to get a drink or something, please go and help yourselves at the bar. And we'll be back uh, at about 22. Thank you. That's one again. Uh, are, we, are you going to come and sit up here, guys? Or on the on the front there, or whichever you want to do. Because I've just I've just got a, two or three slides that I'd like to take you through. If you want to if you want to sit at either end here, or if you want to just sit down there, a little bit more comfortable. No, it's up there. So you know we're not screen. Um, what we want to do is just give you a little flash of what's happening in the game at the minute, what's happening with the club at the minute. Just going to just picking on one or two things that many of you have spoken to us about already this evening they won't come as a surprise to you but they do have a big impact on the club uh, and the club moving forward and what we can do in the years to come you know we all know that this I IMG in the, in, this IMG thing is going to change the face of rugby league we want to be part of that uh, we really do want to be part of that um, we don't know what it will look like it might be two 14s it might be two 10s it might be three 12s there might only be two divisions and the rest of it gets amateurised. Who knows? But we might know a bit more next week. So we just wanted to give you a little, a little uh, view at some of the things that are, are facing us at the minute. This is not to say we want you to feel sorry for us. Um, we haven't got begging balls out yet. <laughs> However, it's, you should all know it's hard at the minute. It's hard, it's tough, and we haven't been playing games at home, we don't have those incomes coming in, it's tough. So we're, we're toughing it out at the moment, just so you know that. And I want to give you just an example of one or two areas that are making it a little bit like that for us. Hopefully these will come up. Ah, can we just focus that a little bit? Ah, that's better. I'll take you through these numbers. I just wanted, these are uh, attendances for the games up until Dewsbury. So if you look down there on the left hand side, those are the budget figures we got in for the gate. And on the, the second one is what we actually took on the gate. And the red figures are the difference. Just don't look at them individually, but look in the third column. At the bottom, it says £40,263. So against budget, up to now, we're nearly £41,000 missing out of the budget. Which is an awful lot of money. Now, we've got games to come. And there are reasons why those numbers are like that. The single biggest problem that this club faces will always be having enough money. Always will be. How do I know that? It's experience. It's, it's always been like that. 
you know, and it repeats itself. It'll be having enough money. The second biggest problem we've got is getting people to come through the door. We've got the best team we've had for 10 years. What have we won? 11 out of 12? 10 out of 11? Playing the best rugby, not only by people who are watching it, but people you see in the pub. Featherston supporters, York supporters, Bradford supporters. Uh, Mark on Sunday, Dewsbury chairman. What a fantastic side you've got. And he only saw us not at our best on Sunday. We're playing a great brand of rugby. We can't get people through the game. And there's lots that we can do better. We know that. It's finding out what we can do better and trying to do that. However, you can't hide from those figures. Um, okay, we've got York this week. We've got £20,000 in the pot. That's what we've put in the pot for the income for that game. So on a Monday night, it's on television. Where's the last one that we had? Uh, who was that one against? Was that Lee? Lee, look at that. There's a reason for that that I'll come on to now, which will just explain it a bit more. You should be aware that these numbers are not great. We're not the only ones. We're not alone here. In fact, Ian was talking to a, a chairman of another championship side today, and he was saying exactly the same thing. If you could just go on to the next slide, Rick. I, I don't know if I'm going to blow you with slides here, but just, are well, these all right just to give you an example of what, what we're about? So look at this game here. Panthers v Witness, 13th of February. This is how many people we had through. Season ticket holders, 769. No, we didn't. We probably had 350. We always put in our gates the total number of season ticket holders sold. Right? So when it says it, when there's 1,400 here, it probably means it's about 1,100. Don't make it any better, does it? But that's what we do. We're telling you, that's what we do. So you've got 769 people. We, are, we dished out some school tickets, pass holders and complimentaries, as you do. We had 153 in here dining. Online, 576 people purchased. Walk-up payers were 311. In total gate was 2,045 people for the witness game here. Look at the costs for that game. Stewards, did you know that stewards cost us just short of 2,000 pound a game? 1,755 pounds. Security, safety officer, gate, first aid, £400. Player food, doctor. So the total cost were 3547 So if you look at that, so we had £14,000 coming in. You have to take VAT out of that. We've got to pay the VAT man, because that's in there. So we take that out. We've got the costs of the game here, and we take that out. We sell a few raffle tickets in here. And we made 8,858 quid on that game, which is not great. Now, if we'd had another 1,000 people coming in, our fixed costs would have been pretty similar. But it would have been profit. But we don't have them. So, you say, what do you do about it? So, against Lee, for a televised game, we are paid by the Rugby League... I'll come on to it in a second. Part of our payment structure from the Rugby League, we're paid on our attendances, our, our financial stability, um, number of seasons, our, our financial reliability over the year. Are we, are we, are we seem to be um, uh, due, duly diligent in managing the club. Also, this year, they've brought in we will give you part of your money depending on how you handle the television traffic. So how you promote the game, how many people you get there, how many whiz bangs have you got going up, how many fireworks have you got in the corner, what's your food like? They'll assess all of that and they'll pay us part of our money on how we've performed. So what do we need to do? We need to make sure we get a decent crowd down on a Monday night when the kids are at school, we're still in winter. Everybody says, cut your prices. Didn't it? 
make it affordable. We did. So we had 776 season tickets now, and we've gained seven, right? We had school tickets, passports, 232. Hospitality, we had nearly 200 in here, that was great. Online tickets purchased, 495, right? It's less than they were for the, the, the witness game. And walk-up payers were 500, which was more than that game. Can you remember what we charged to come into that match? 10 pounds. 10 pounds to come in. Because we wanted this place buzzing. We wanted it on fire. We wanted those fantastic South Standers to be drumming and beating and singing and shouting and jumping around. But that's all we got. <clears throat> So if you look at that total game, all of that effort we put in, all of that effort we put in, got us 2,200. Our cost for that game went up to 6,855. Why? Because we put some entertainment on. We had fireworks, we had the, we got them sponsored actually by a, I won't, I won't say who it was, but a, a, a first class sponsor Sponsored, you know those flamethrowers that were out here? We got those sponsored. So, our cost was 6,855. I don't need to tell you anymore, I'll look at that bottom number. So against, against Lee, the top side, who we had, I can't remember what we had in the budget, but it'd be a 20,000 pound budget. We ended up, prof, the profit was 3,300 and two pounds. If we'd had another thousand, that would have all been straight in there. This is not a sob story. We're not looking for sympathy. We're just trying to point out to you that this is a tough little business that we're in at the minute. It's hard. Could we move on, landlord? Is everybody all right with this? You're not getting too depressed, are you? Yeah. Is it good? Is it what you like to hear? You should, you should know about this, shouldn't you? So, look at this. Lee game, ticket breakdown. On the left, we handed out to the schools uh, 92 adult tickets. These are all schools where we're working with Jack Duffy in the school. We're working on programmes week in and week out. They weren't turning up at St Malachy's and saying, here there were schools we knew. Uh, so we gave away, for that game, 92 tickets to the game to adults. We got 29 people came. Free tickets. We gave away 477 tickets to children. 50 came. We were disappointed. We've got a lot of work to do with the amateur clubs in this town, and we know that. And if Jack was here now, he'd say to you, that's one area where I've not really got to grips with it. And we, we're mindful of that. And uh, Cara, who's at the back, who's taking uh, Jack's job, Cara's mindful of that as well. But what we said was, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's go to these community clubs. Let's go to them and say to them, £10 an a £10 a ticket, you can bring three kids in with you, two tickets, 20 quid, three free children, up to three free children, come on. And, and, for every ticket you buy, for every ticket you buy, we'll give you some money back to the club. And that's what we got, out of all the amateur clubs. And that's what we gave away. We gave Booth down five pounds back. They had two tickets. And we gave them £2.50, twice. Now, we're not going to give up on that. But however, people say, what are you doing? We're trying to do an awful lot. And we're trying things and seeing where it gets us to. And I think, you know, we have a big job to do to convince the public. We have to convince the public that this is worth fighting for. Because, if you look at these figures and take them where they are, you'd be full of doom and gloom. Well, we're not. We've got to keep on. We're trying hard. It's hard. It's very hard. It's really hard at the minute. That's the message you can take away. But we're fighting for it. 
And we're doing these things and we're doing more of these things as well. Next slide. Right, this, will be, this is interesting. Rugby league funding and player budget. Let's take the player budget on the bottom there. 2018, this is with everything in. This is not contract. Contract is much less than that. Unfortunately, when they win, they earn money. They earn bonuses. <laughs> and they're earning a lot of bonuses at the minute, thankfully. Brilliant. However, this is our player budget, including everything. Loans, pensions, pensions the whole shooting match. So you can see, we've been pretty consistent, apart from 2021, for obvious reasons. And then this year, on the top, is the central funding that we've received. So you see that in 2018, we got uh, 450,000. Last year, we got 168,000. Well, by my calculations, there's about a 330,000 pound gap there, which we've got to fill. And that's what we're trying to do. And that's why we've got fantastic, and don't underestimate our commercial partners. We're the envy of the championship with our commercial partners. Honest to God. When you look at what we get, how supportive they are. You, there's many of you here tonight, who sponsor players, who sponsor the shirt, sponsor the shorts, sponsor the socks. Fantastic. That's how we're trying to fill the gap. But look at that. It's big, isn't it? A bit that's been widening and widening and widening. Do you know what the good news is? Can you hear that? Yeah. The good news is that the IMG deal is designed to obliterate that, to try and bring it fairer and more in line with Super League. So you've got Super League 1, Super League 2 perhaps, and the difference isn't three quarters of a million, it's maybe three or four hundred thousand. So we're all getting a bit of kilter. And we all do better if we can keep in that group. So that's where the problems start. If you compound that, if you're going to compound that and put into that diminishing attendances, diminishing revenues, you can see where we get to. And that's what we're fighting. That's what we're fighting. Just to let you know, I told you earlier about the central funding. This is what it's based on. So whatever we get this year, and bear in mind, what we get this year demands, determines a lot of what we can spend next year. We won't get to know that until when, Ian? December. We won't know until December what we're getting for next year. Right? So we, it's hard to plan in that situation, especially as you don't have someone saying, well, I'll underwrite half a million of it for you. Right? Good luck to them, but we don't have that. So we've got a bit of a guessing game. And this is how we pay. I didn't get them all last time. How we finish in the league, number of times we broadcast, which will help because we're successful and they're going to want us on. So we'll be broadcast a bit. Uh, finances, profit, investment, turnover, etc. Average home league attendance. Next Monday, there's three amounts. I'll tell you two. You get 5,000 or 12,500 from the TV company. You get two and a half grand to promote the game, and you get 5,000 or 12,500 as a thank you very much towards that lump of 20k that we wanted for York. Yeah, remember that? 5,000 does. Because our attendances are so low. With that far down on the league table, Forget how many times we've been on, we're so far down we qualify for 5k. So that hits you there as well. Uh, governance is player welfare, safeguarding, etc. I think we, 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 we're seen as, uh, 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 as good as there is in the championship for that sort of thing. And on data, social media follows, interactions on Facebook, Instagram, engagements on Twitter. Whenever you see something, share it, like it. Everything that you do, do it as often as you can, because all of those numbers help us. They all help us. It's the modern world. So, that's why it's a bit tough at the minute. But we've got to crack on. 
Please look. Spread the gospel. Because you're in our top 10%. You've taken the time to come down here tonight. You've taken the time to listen to what people have said. You're the ones who are, who are our people who are going to spread the gospel for us. And we need you to do that. That's how you can help us. Buy merchandise. We've got mer we're not launching um, a strip for Headingley. Lots of clubs are out there. We're not. We've, you know, we're not, we aren't going to do that. However, uh, help with cost of living, help with the shop. There's going to be a sale starting uh, midnight, tonight. midnight tonight. Some really good discounts online. Try and support the shop. Support the merchandise. Let's make sure we've got more blue and white shirt shirts out there. And against Workington. Um, <laughs> buy some of our tickets. Are oh, you laughing at something? <laughs> and you think that's funny, do you? Blue and white shirt shirts. <laughs> it's got a ring to it. Put that in the ad for the uh, for the sale. Blue and white shite shirts. <laughs> hey, sorry, I'm trying hard here. Some of our tickets. Buy them from the club. Fantastic way to help the club at the minute. I said earlier on to David about PF2. It's something that we've just not really got off the ground properly. But we've had sufficient money in PF2. It's like Squad Builder was. I think we need to look at that and we need to talk to the trust about that and we need to, once we've got that sorted out, we can, uh, uh, we can have a real good go with it. Um, join Cash Facts Lottery. Richard's here tonight. Join the lottery and the Supporters Trust. Join the Supporters Trust. Be a member. Be active. Help them. You can see what they can do. That group, that committee, they brought £10,000 to us, which was fantastic. Made a difference and interact with us on the club's social media site. I said that to you earlier. Please get involved on there. If you see something you like it, share it. Next one, please. Can we keep, can we keep on that one? Sorry? <coughs> what is PF2? PF2 is uh, Panthers Future Fund. And if that's a Panthers Future, why don't we know? Well, it, it was publicised, Malcolm, but not very well, right? So PF2 was launched probably 15 months ago. Yeah, and it was, it was all over the, all over the place. And you're right, we didn't do a particularly good job on it. We didn't. You've got to hold your hands up. We didn't. There are circumstances for that, but we didn't. However, you're not going to get everything right every time. And we didn't with that. Uh, but I think, what do we do to join? Have they, any of the fans been informed of what we Yes, they have. We did mail outs at the time, sir, didn't we? We did emails and things like that. We mail out to whom? To all our season ticket holders, everybody that we've got on record. I've never heard of PF2 would have been a season ticket holder for 50 years. I know. And that's the worrying bit. It's, 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 it's on the website. Yeah, we, we it's, on the, it's on the website. We need to get smarter at that. I understand that. No, you've just said that it, it's, <coughs> you, you've let uh, the spectators go. We, we don't know. No, but we have let, we did do it. We've got quite a few people who pay into it regularly. We've got, we've got a number of people who are paying in regular yeah. to it. Yeah. Oh, we need a lot more. We do. We do. How do we do it? We can uh, you'll find out very shortly, Malcolm. <laughs> um, well, this week, anyway. <laughs> um, we move on to the next slide, quickly. <laughs> We're, um, look, we all know what's out there at the minute. This cost of living uh, business is frightening and it's affecting every one of us. You know, it's hard out there. So, um, for, for the games, starting with the Workington game, every game we're going to have something that will help people just with the cost of living. It might be a family ticket, it might be all kids get, I don't know, a hot dog or a burger or something like that. Something that we can, something that we can offer that will help people with the, cost, with the cost of living. We'll have that as a purpose for those last five games. We're going to launch a five game discounted um, season ticket. Why? Well, it will be uh, sufficiently discounted so that people who are struggling a little bit can say, well, I can get to five games there. It's not going to have the photograph on it. So people might say, well, I can't get to five games, but I'll have one because my son can have it. So it just makes it a bit more, a bit more freedom for everybody there. So we're doing that to try and, to try and help, help people a little bit. Next year is our 150th anniversary, uh, which is a great achievement. And we'll shortly hope for a 
with Linda's help and a few more people, get around to thinking about what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have 350 offers. So these will be offers that 50 people can take advantage of, making 150 in total. And the first one that we will hopefully be launching uh, in the next week or so, we're going to launch a three-year season ticket. That's a three-year season ticket with prices frozen for three years. There'll be a celebration plaque out there that will have 150 names on it, beautiful brass plaques. And the transfer of ownership once within that three-year period. So if you get it and uh, you say, well, I'll get it, but I'm moving to London, well, you can give it your son, your daughter, your auntie, your brother, your sister, your friend. So it is transferable. So, that's what we're going to be launching. £500. So anybody who wishes to support the club, who wants to invest £500, will help the club fantastically, brilliantly, at the minute. There'll be 50 only. If anybody, we're not putting them on sale just till, I think it's a week on Monday maybe, isn't it? something like that. Anybody who's interested in that, just put an expression of interest in tonight, we'll put your name down. They'll go quickly, but it's just something to set the ball rolling, to give something back to someone who might want to invest that sort of money, and it will help the club currently. It will help the club currently. So we're going to be launching that. There'll be two more offers to be launched before the end of the year. Not quite sure what we're doing with those yet. And we're also going to launch a celebration shirt that you can have your name sublimated into. Yeah? So it'll be a shirt that if you want to pay 25 quid, you can have your name in it and it'll be on the celebration shirt. But more details to come on that. So, lots of things going on, lots of things happening, lots of ways that you can help the club. Um, any questions? Thank you. Yeah, one thing we can all agree on is the problem is getting more paying spectators. Yes. Is it worth, I mean, right now, a 10 minute brainstorming session for ideas on, on how to do that. Yeah, we can do that, but could could I do that right at the end? Yeah. Once, one or, once, one or two, once we've got through it, I think that's fine. And would you make a note of those, Sarah? We can do that, definitely. And I would say that if you have any 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 ideas at all, send them to me, the club, you know. Yeah, rubbish. Yeah, exactly. I, I totally agree with you. And we talked about that, and we, we, hope, for, we hope for that. So, uh, that's my little bit of spiel gone. That's me done. You'd be glad to hear. Um, have you got any questions for the board? Anybody got any questions for the board? And I won't be dwelling too long if you haven't. <laughs> if any. Anybody got any questions? Anything you'd like to ask? Me, Lauren, Ian, Gary, Sarah? Yes, Michael. It's not specifically the board, but the, 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 the stuff that's been coming out from Rick and the team is excellent. Yeah. I, I, it may be partly to do with me and my age, but I won't touch Facebook as if it's a, a deadly illness because <laughs> I, 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 t I take the view that expo exposing your personal life to the public through the internet is complete and utter madness, so I won't do it. It follows that when you, when you start putting stuff on Facebook and not in, on more accessible places like YouTube particularly, that old buggers like me don't get to see it. And it seems these days that the, the, the way to attract people into a sport is clips because they're like, they're like a nice, yeah. short, clever yeah. clip. And every time you put one on Facebook, on Facebook, you hide it from me. Every time you put it on YouTube, we'll watch it again and again. And, right. and, and, and that, I think, I think you, not having it on, Facebook, on YouTube is a mistake. Yeah. Can I say something? Can I pick up on that? Okay. Uh, advertising board going around the town centre like they did with the football before the Chesterfield game, showing clips of the yeah. teams down here. Okay. Going around the town centre. Right. Well, let me just handle this from Michael, can, which can, is... Can I answer that? Yeah. So, so the, the reason we put it on Facebook is because on, on one of the uh, stipulations that Steve mentioned about um, our data, it's called a return on investment. We yeah. only get measured on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram um, interactions. YouTube isn't counted in that, so that's the reason why 
We always try to put it on because we know that it's accessible to people. We'll always put the game on later, so there's a record there for years. But that it takes clicks away from our Facebook and, and other sites, right. which will, in the end, end up taking money away from the club. So we'll always do it a few days later, um, just so it's there for people to see. But primarily, we have to put it on Facebook, we have to put it on Twitter, we have to put it on Instagram because financially that will help us in the long run. Right, well, if if the rugby league's ROI is having that effect, then some some leaning needs to go on the RFL. I would say I, I can't see what's the matter with counting uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, I think it, I think as long as we get it on YouTube, Rick, I think that's it. Always that's goes on on like a two or three day delay, yeah. right. just yeah. to give the Facebook algorithms chance to go all the way through. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Interactions are up, so that's good. Yeah, but we've got a you know I'm I'm a bit like Michael. Facebook, um, that my grandchildren can't believe it that Facebook doesn't rule my life. There's something wrong with me, but um, uh, so um, there are lots of people within our demographic of this club that are probably not rushing home to look at Facebook every night. However, we've got to uh, we've got to cater for everyone, you know. So I think that's if we can speed that up a little bit, if we can. Do you I think, no, we can't. I, I understand the ROI point. Yeah, I, mean, I didn't know that was the case. But yeah. if, that, if that is the point, I think the, the RFL needs inviting to review yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, totally agree. Anybody got any other questions? Anybody like to ask a question of any of us about the club? We're going to advertise the game better. How would you do that? Like I'm referring back to the Chesterfield game, the football. Yes. They had a board going around the town centre showing clips. Yeah. Of the players scoring goals. Maybe that would. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Would you need something in that? Sarah, respect. would you put that down? I think that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. We've yeah. done that before. It didn't work. Great idea. Well, it does work. It, it does work. It didn't. There's, a, there's something. Something works for everyone. It's just getting the right thing that works for more people. It will work in that town centre. Because you know, because you know, I saw you there today. Yeah, we are. We're going through. Me and you. Anybody else got anything? To say anything, any yes, sir. Oh, I know this gentleman's got a question. Is that a couple of front? Oh, yeah, come up to the front. That's John. Come on, Dad. Right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, being a keen supporter of this club, I've been here for 60 years. Right, we're now looking forward um, to another year where we've got a lot of travel to do. First of all, I'd like to give a big Round of applause for Malcolm, who was on the list this year. And Neil, has Neil gone? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neil, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. But we've got to look on to next season. We're still going to have long trips away to Whitehaven, London, Newcastle, Barrow. Hopefully, working to go down, we get Keithley, so it's a bit closer. But I think we need to look at how we can get in a way where we can subsidise the travel. Malcolm said on Sunday when we were going to Dewsbury to go to London, it's going to cost us £35. You've got your ticket to pay on top of that, so you're talking £50 out, and you know the price of beer in London is expensive. <laughs> right? As I said earlier, at the start of me, thanks very much to Lawrence, he put that coach on to Whitehaven. I'd like to make a proposal and, see, and just see how many hands are in there. But between the close season, we all chip in £10 into an account, which we can, hopefully we can work up, get a fund going, which will subsidise the travel and get more supporters going away to these away grounds long ago. Not the 50 people who were borrowed, the 600 who were at Dewsbury. So if anybody <coughs> agrees with that, can I show, show hands? I agree. And then we can take it on. Travel club. Right. A travel, travel club. club. Step yeah. 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 And it's such a nice, so not paying thirty-five pounds. It only cost us twenty pounds. Yeah, because you got your ticket on top when you go away. Yeah, Malcolm, if you run it next year and you need a hand to do it, I'll, I'm quite willing to give you a hand. Yeah, yeah. But pass it on to your friends. There's a lot of guys not here tonight are on those coaches. If you see them, tell them, this is the proposal. We build it up during the close season, and we get a funding to subsidise our travel for next year. Because the price of fuel is going to go up. Yeah. Thank, Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.
and we'll do all we can to get you the PR around that and hopefully get it going. It's nice isn't it? if you can just pay a little bit in every week or every month, once a month, and then you come to these, some of these bigger games where you've got to uh, put a bit extra in. If you've got 20 quid or 40 quid or 60 quid in the kitty, you can just bring it forward. It just makes it a bit more palatable in, the, uh, in, in these tough times. Anyone else got anything to say? Any questions? Anybody coming on Monday? How, how big a difference is it, the position we finished in League? At one time, going back to 2018, yes. it made a big difference what position you finished in the Championship. Yeah, I th what difference does it make these days? It makes, it makes a big difference. Yeah. You'd so, you know, if we finished third and not 12th, we'd, we'd see a big difference. <laughs> it's not as big as it used to be, Neil. However, you may... You may Ian knows better than me, but you may start off with a pot that says if you finish third, uh, it's all based on where you finish in the tables. So the, the where you finish, you might have, I think this is how it works, you might have 30% of the pot is on where you finish. It's where you finish after the playoffs. Yeah, it's where you finish after the playoffs. If you finish third, you end up fifth. Yeah, so if you lose your playoff game, you end up fifth and you finish third in the league. So it's where you finish there. Could be like 25 grand yeah. Which happened to us at Featherston, didn't it? Was it? Did we do that? No, we stayed third. Stayed third. Oh, I because it was a funny game. <laughs> so there is, there is, there are differences. Look, it's like throwing the balls up in the air. What numbers you're going to catch? You just know there'll be a lump of money there at the minute. Bring the opposition. Bring the opposition. Anybody else? Anything else? It's half past nine. We said we'd be finished. It's <laughs> twenty past nine. Anybody got anything else? Look, I think we'll call it a day there. Um, we're going to have now just a quick, if anybody's got any ideas, as daft as they might seem, this is a brainstorm, shout them out if you've got any ideas, probably not reducing prices, not in half anyway. Um, if anybody's got, we've got a great idea here, which is about that, yes? I'm just going to say, either the day before a match at home, or the week before a match at home, get the Panther mascot in town. Yeah. With a promote, you know, a league yeah. that's just saying this is happening tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. The players, if they're available. Yeah. But, you know, before every game, so that somebody's in the town centre. Yeah. It's all that push. We're getting people from the church. Giving out the match. Oh, no, no. <laughs> you got that, Sarah? Yeah. Anybody else got anything to add? Yes, sir. The thing we put on about the community clubs, obviously, will work in with them and whether that the coach. Now, you're not talking about this in Toby at Halifax. Um, there's a massive rugby union community in Halifax yeah. where I was surprised when I went to rugby union. A lot of them don't <coughs> actually watch rugby union and they watch Super League. Yeah. So it might be worth doing something like that in the union clubs as well. Great so idea. A lot of union clubs are money driven in that I were amazed, you know, Yorkshire 4, Yorkshire 5 will pay a coach £4,000 a year yeah. or whatever it is down at Eve to come pro. So they've got a lot of costs so something incentive based like that. I think there is a chance to get them people that in club Africa on a first night watching two plays, but not paying any attention here. And yeah. Them down. Great idea. Definitely. Um, I know you can't. Well, when, when do their kids normally play in, in rugby union? Is it Saturdays, Sundays? Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday. Sunday morning, sir. So. Right. But that's a, that's a great initiative. Thank you. Good idea. Anybody else got it? One, yes, sir. What about curtain raisers before the game? Uh, curtain raisers are a great idea, except for the fact that we're not allowed to play them generally <laughs> by the stadium. Yeah. I think that's right, isn't it, sir? Why do we have to go play away every summer? Um, because they've got to get that bit of turf out there from what it looked like, and it looked okay to us in here, Malcolm. But when you got on it, it was a right mess. When we played our last game, to what it looks like now is like a rather large bowling green. They've got to do that rectification. There's a lot of issues with the with the with the ground, uh, with the with the surface, etc., etc. That's linked between Halifax Town and ourselves. Um, and Mr. Chairman Lawrence has been in dialogue with their chairman over the last three months. Um, it's not a, it's not an easy coalition, shall we say? <laughs> However, uh, words have been exchanged which were positive. You know, so we're hoping. You know that 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 needs to be a new pitch altogether. You know, so but that's a separate story. But they do need to do that. Doesn't help us. However, now we've got six home games to come, and we might be third after 
Monday night, and it gives us a good chance to secure that position. So that's why, and we can't play curtain raisers. Uh, we got a little, we got a little window of opportunity that we had um, uh, a few weeks ago, didn't we, Sarah? Uh, and that fell through because they changed. They moved the Shrewsbury game to a Tuesday and it all fell through. We've got the college, who we've got a fantastic relationship with. A really good developing relationship with the college. Fantastic. We with have the... a singer on a bit of entertainment. We've had singers and entertainment behind oh, there. We need them back. We need them back. We need them back. We Very good. Back. We need them back. Back. People yeah. don't come here to sell it, watch singers. They come to play and watch rugby. But, no, yeah, I think, you know, we need, to, we need to make the experience. We need to make the experience what everybody wants so some of us just want to go and watch rugby some would rather see uh a, some i, I won't mind seeing the black knight mills band on there myself that'd be, that'd be fantastic Bre what, well sorry about that didn't know, didn't realize i was cutting across you there um but we've all got different things that we'd like and of course you know we'd, we'd love to have live music on behind there but there's a cost to it and we've got to be careful about that, we've got to be mindful about it, and we've got to get extra stewarding in, and we, we've got to get stewards in four extra places, if we have one of Ian's, you hear somewhere, one of Ian's wagons there with a band on board, you know, so there's all sorts of questions about that, but um, I think these guys here would say that the South Stand should be the experience that brings people back, and, and it's hard to disagree with that, so I think we should make Make a note of that again, Sarah. Just I would say that, and as a family of three young kids, we've enjoyed like entertainment behind there. Yeah. But can we clear up the rules on moving between? Because we've come a lot of times at eight here, and you get to a corner, and Stuart will say, oh, "I don't know if you can go through." Well, you'll get through, and you'll get oh, well, I paid in here, and I get oh, well, I need a radio, so and so and so and so and so and so. I can't remember which match it was. We ended up missing the first fifteen minutes of the game. Just waiting for a steward to radio someone, and yeah. it ended up being what was great down there ended up being a bit of a farce, and yeah. your actual match experience got affected. Yeah. I mean, I'm not loving so much, well, but you know, if we, I were a yeah. sort of half hearted fan, I would have been a bit mixed. You see, like, oh, you see, you know, we're not paying Tom Saintly for stewarding. Mm -hmm. We yeah, expect we yeah. expect it to be done properly. And believe me, they are briefed. The to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. They are briefed. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Young lady, young lady, just behind you. Yes. Yeah. Talking about stewards, why? Who oh, oh, says how many stewards we must have? Because you go to some grounds and. Yeah, it's it's heavy, but they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, we, the money, we they? Class, the stadium <laughs> is fast. Oh, it's council. Colverdale will say what we've got. <laughs> Unfortunately, this stadium is classed as a designated sports ground because um, it's council owned and we have to adhere to the green guide, it's called. <laughs> which is a, a ridiculously long book I wouldn't even attempt to read. But they have guidelines on stewards and it's a fault of the design of our ground is that stewards have to be positioned at the entrances and exits. It's Why not on how many, security, then, because that's, that's what's in the green guide. So because of that stand, you go to Dewsbury and you can only get in and out of the stand at one place. You don't have that here you've actually got four entrances in between and one at either end. And under the green guide rules, you need to have stewards at every entrance and exit. We've tried, and the new safety offer we've got is, is quite good. He's, he's been working well these last six months or so. We've seen improvements and he's helping us. Um, just by cutting off the edges of the stand saves you for stewards. And you have to pay stewards for a minimum of five hours and employers an eye on it and everything so it, it is really it's a big saving when we can do that um, and that's the reason why opening the the north stand is not happening as often because it just costs you an extra 800 pound to open that stand on the day um, it's like opening the ground early to open an hour earlier it's an extra 450 pound so we just try and weigh in to everything how we can do it as cheap as possible um, but the safety officer does decide and it's only one particular club that we have to have a lot of extra SIAs at and you can probably guess who that is. The rest of them, it's fine, we, we just have the two around. Um, but yeah, it's, it's dictated to us really um, by the Green Guide. 
Thanks, Harry. Yes. Just with regards to the stewards. I know they've got to be there, and that's fine. But why do they need to stand in the way at all the grounds we go to? We sit on a little. Are <laughs> you right there? <laughs> In a way, and they're still looking at the crowd, but they're not obstructing the view. Right. In particular, we attended to someone in a wheelchair, yeah. and there is one particular steward that stands in front. She's not watching the game. She continually goes like this. Yeah. So you move to the door. She's on fire, isn't she? She's <laughs> moving the way. She's fine, you're us, but the talking in the wheelchair can't see. Why can't no. sit? No, you're right. Sarah, I think that's something that we can we can rec we can try and rectify that. We have a briefing with them before every yeah. day, so we you know, can bring I all mean, this. I know they've got to be there. Anyway. Appreciate why they're there mm. because we speak to them all the time. And we have good banks with them, but why can't we sit on a little buffet yeah. in the bit after the pitch? Look out yeah. and not Looks like we're going to go to B&Q and get a few little Sorry. buffets. No. <laughs> no, you won't. No, no. It's a, it's a very simple thing, but something that's really quite important. You know, they do it at other grounds. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. No, no, I agree with you. So if you see a little, a lot of buffeted little uh, <laughs> stewards on Monday night, you know, which we, work. <laughs> yes, Mike? The, tra the travel club idea. Yes. Why can't you extend that to pay £10 a month for out of season and buy a season ticket that way? Or um, rather than giving you a, a blank $100 or £100, pounds, why don't you pay £30 It's, a it's month? nice to get a bit of money in yeah, till the deep midwinter, Mike. But then you know it's I mean? still to have something coming in. If it was like a Panthers saving club, yeah. you get kids and everybody's saving. Panthers saving club. Hmm? Yeah, thank you. David? Yeah, I'm much in the awareness of advertising board on Burdock Way. Um, that might be cost prohibitive, but worth investigating possibly. Yeah. Any advertising? Where is it? Burdock Way. Burdock Way. Advertising yeah, there is. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we've got, we've got permission to get advertising boards on that top fence on, on that road up there. Um, a lot of it's concealed by overgrown stuff but there are a couple of spots where we could get something in you know so uh we've got to look definitely look at that are there any plans to clear that area up because in the past we've all helped to do it so what on the top there yeah, yeah. we'll we do it again yeah. um can we the, can ask? the rotary club did it as a volunteer and then i think lloyd's um, had some staff that came as part of the community. We, we could ask Gary Burns about that, yeah, couldn't we? We'll ask Gary Burns about that. Yeah, you're completely wasting your breath with Gary Burns. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. But, <laughs> but, but, <laughs> nothing personal, of course. No, no I've, I've, spoke, I've spoken to Gary Burns many times and I've wasted my breath many times. The, the position up there is that Halifax Rotary Club, with a lot of support from elsewhere both financial and some labor tidied it all up about five years ago and we've periodically gone back and weeded it right it's, it's short of weeding at the moment but there is a party going in the next two or three weeks so, to bring the weeding well, up to speed but it is it isn't actually if you, if you look at it I'm not a gardener but those people who are gardeners can recognize that actually it isn't overgrown anymore. Oh. The stuff that was planted there really was planted with the intention that it would be permanent and it would gradually fill in. So it's gradually <laughs> filling in. The thing that will make them very unhappy is if you start tearing plants down in order right. to put a poster up in order to make the poster visible. I see what you mean, but Michael. That, you know, I'm not Probably not the best that. idea, am I? Well, I'm on both sides of the argument. Yes, so no, I understand I'm, I'm that. Staying out but there, there are, there are there is a spot about 20 yards wide on there that may have been planted out now. I always thought that was something that we could have had something on, you know. Um, but we're mindful of that and we, uh, if, if they'd like some help in doing that, we could ask some of our supporters to come down and help. Well, well I'll, I'll pass that message yeah. on, but the, the council have been asked repeatedly, since we've sorted it out for you, will you now look after it? And the answer is no, we've no, no budget. It's a surprise. <laughs> Yes, sir. We can't, I can't hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry, Malcolm. Sorry, I'm getting lazy as the night's going on. Things on the doing so work bypass, would it be worth having a conversation with Halifax Town and with us to push the council to 
put some sort of signs up saying welcome to the home of Halifax Panthers in Halifax Town. Yeah. Yeah. It cost them next to no while they're doing work. Because they do nothing to raise our profile or Halifax Town. Not directional signs, but just saying welcome yeah, to Halifax Home. Literally off. every fan, every person that comes into Halifax yeah. comes on that road. I mean, it annoys me that you know, Panthers and Town aren't even mentioned on stage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, like I say, yeah. I'd be wasting the rent. But yeah. for the sake of two posts and a board, it seems like he's a work to me. One commission. Yeah. Honey <laughs> call. <laughs> any more? Or any more? Give you five seconds. Four. Three. Two. We just have to get involved with our community. Oh my God, how do I not do you? Christ Almighty. Hear me. The Panther. The Panther, yeah. Went up to the mosque up Jimmy Street. And it's all, this is what we need, multicultural. Yeah. Yeah, and this is what we need. We're doing, we're doing an awful lot of that sort of thing with uh, our community programme. No, we need to do more. Yes, but we are, we are. Jack's doing a lot. And Cara up there, Cara knows about that. And the kids are involved as well. It's fantastic. Everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you all, and, uh, and hopefully all with a friend next uh, Monday evening. Bring a friend. Thank you very much. No, Lawrence hasn't got any, so he's not. <laughs> See you later, everyone. Go, go home. Go safely. Thank you. Bye.